So I don't often shoot with a 35 millimeter lens. If you guys have been following my channel for a while now, I have my Panit Jason Vong Wombo Combo, the 24 and the 85 millimeter. But for our time here in Singapore, I kind of want to break out of my comfort zone and use a 35 millimeter more. So on this trip, I pack quite a few 35s. I'm working on some videos, all right? But in particular, I want to highlight the one on this camera, the Sony RX1, which is an interesting compact camera because housed inside of it is an actual full frame sensor. That's right, I'm literally using the same sensor size as one of the Sony cameras here, but in the form factor of a point and shoot. Well, kind of. It has a fixed 35 millimeter f2 lens and for a camera that came out a decade ago i'm getting results as if i'm shooting with a modern day sony alpha camera if you want to see a short review on this camera in the future let me know in the comments and shout out to keh camera for sponsoring a portion of this video let's get right into it now, if you're an APS-C user, you'll need to consider a 24 millimeter lens as the crop factor on your camera will give that the 35 millimeter full frame look that we'll be talking about in this video. Number one, the 35 millimeter is a fantastic travel lens. So you almost can't go wrong with a 35 millimeter for travel, vacation, and street photography. It's very environmental friendly. And I'm not talking about it in a sustainability manner, but you're gonna be in very scenic places and you're gonna wanna capture the environment that you're in. That's important. The 35 millimeter is still considered a wide lens, but it's not so wide where you will lose attention in your photos. It's just enough to capture everything you need to present in an image. It provides more of a focus, if you will. It's perfect for street, it's perfect for landmarks, and of course, it is perfect for food. Okay, probably not the best idea to have hot soup noodles during peak noon in a humid climate like Singapore, but damn this prawn and pork ribs noodles are too damn good. It's worth suffering for. Moving on to number two. Why yes, the 35 millimeter is fantastic for casual portraits. Environmental portraits is one of the 35 millimeter strong suit. After all, it's equally important to capture your friends and family in these travel images. So you know, y'all can flex on social media. That's right, I know why you travel. You just wanna, you just wanna show off, I get it. Just, just kidding. But it's fun and it's easy to pop off some easy shots of your friend or your significant other. And if you're using a fast aperture lens like an f2, you get some decent background bokeh. With a lens like the 35mm, you won't easily lose out on the important context of the area. Both the subject and the environment are almost favored equally in the same frame. And definitely do not be afraid to stop down to get more of the background and focus from time to time. Wow, bokeh is life story is more important. Moving on to number three, how I love using the 35 millimeter during our particular trip here in Singapore. I love looking out for frames within frames. The first frame being the main composition, what you're seeing overall. And the other frames are just tiny little boxes within the composition to fit multiple subjects in. It is one of the focal lengths that you can do this easily with. If it's too wide, the frames within would get too small. And if it's too tight, then you're limiting the amount of things you can fit within the main frame. With the 35 millimeter, it's just right. So get on out there, Goldilocks. Now, I already love this particular photo of the Chinese medicine store, but I love it even more when I blew it up and saw myself in the mirror. Hot damn. Now, if you're enjoying the information from this video and considering getting a 35 millimeter lens, you can also save some money by buying it used from KEH Camera, who is also today's sponsor of this video. This particular RX1 is technically a discontinued camera, but still a very capable one as you've seen throughout this video. I love this little thing. Tiny pocket camera with a full frame sensor. Oh yeah. But for you, you'll find a plethora of 35mm lenses readily available for your camera from KEH. All the camera gear are properly inspected, and you'll know the conditions they're in before you purchase it. The pre-love gear will be shipped to you, and you'll find that they're packaged solidly with a nice case and plastic wrappings. And in case you're not happy with the gear, it is backed by a 21-day return policy, and should things go wrong, you have 180 days in warranty. Or if you need to make room for other camera gear, you can also sell to KEH. One of their trained buyers will schedule a pickup for your gear, and if you're not happy with the final quote, they will return the gear back to you for free, cost you nothing. 
To learn more, check out the link in the description box below. Thanks for listening. Now back to the video. Number four, versatility, portability, and pairings. The 35 millimeter, especially the F2.8 or the F1.8 variants are incredibly tiny and easy to bring around. It's generally a highly rated prime lens for travel, vacation, and street because you won't be breaking your back carrying this around all day. And because of that, people usually like to pair a 35 millimeter with an 85 millimeter just to get two different looks and you'll likely have space for an 85mm f1.8. However, I would not recommend pairing it with a 24mm or a 50mm, as the 35mm will likely give you a very similar look on its own. So let's talk about some of the shortcomings of the 35mm lens, because it is equally important to highlight why the 35mm may not be ideal in a lot of situations. For one, it's not wide enough. At times when you're in a cramped area or narrow spaces, it may be harder to capture what you want to capture. For example, architectural interiors, especially if you want to emphasize the grandness of it, you may want to resort to a wider lens, something like a 12 to 24 or a 16 to 35. And if you're a solo traveler, it might be hard to take a nice selfie with it. You might still have to whip out your phone in that case. Moving on, the 35mm will sometimes challenge you to get close to things. And while it does build confidence muscles, if you're a little shy walking up to shop owners like I am, you might want to carry a telephoto lens just in case. Like my favorite, the 85mm. And lastly, after all, it's a prime lens, so you are limited to just 35mm. A 16 to 35mm zoom lens would generally be a safer bet for versatility and you get the flexibility of going wider if you need to. However, the trade off would be that it's slightly bigger. But at the end of the day, the 35mm is a great middle ground prime lens if you want something tiny and lightweight. A great one and done walk around lens, perfect for nearly every general scenario. However, if you're not convinced about the 35, but you want to learn more about why the 24 and the 85 is the Jason Vong Wombo combo, check out these two videos here on the screen. Thanks for watching, like and comment, and check out KEH, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.